Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have the last color variation on the Les Paul Goddess that I had to document. The Les Paul Goddess was a series from 2006 and 2007, mainly geared towards women. And by gearing it towards women, they essentially made the Les Paul a little bit thinner and a little bit less wide. They also simplified its design with a wrap tail piece, a master volume and master tone control, as well as offered it in five beautiful finishes. Rose Burst, Purple Burst, Ice Burst, Sky Burst, and Ebony. Now I've been on the record multiple times saying the black one's ugly, but now that I finally had it in my hands, just as I did with the Ice Burst one, there really is something beautiful to these because it's all in the binding on this. This has such a classy look to it in person. It's something that photos and even video can't really do justice. These were modeled after a Les Paul standard in specs. You have a maple top with a chambered mahogany back with a regular mahogany neck and an ebony fretboard. That's the only thing that's not very standard about these, but you do have the trapezoid inlays. And besides the beautiful finishes, each of these series had special colored pickups. Now the black one gets these kind of copper colored pickups. These are not the same as what's in the rose burst. Those are more red and obviously the purple are purple. And then the ice and sky burst get kind of a blue shade of wiring. But these are just your regular 490R, 498T, so it's kind of a rock tone for these guys. Another feature for the Goddess series is a colored Gibson logo. Now, I always look down on Ice Burst and Ebony because what matches the yogurt and black ones are just the regular white Gibson logo. So these two finishes kind of get left out in that aspect, but that's just kind of the way it goes. I think there's definitely a really nice collector appeal to owning one of every single color because these things, they just look great. I mean, some people don't like the looks of them with the wrap tail piece, but the rose and purple ones have to be my favorite. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench, take a look at its part and see how it was built. All right, under the hood, let's take a look at these pickups. First off, something that I don't think I've ever really realized or pointed out with these goddess pickups is they do not have adjustable pole pieces. Usually you'll have like that one row at the bottom and at the top for the neck pickup. Perhaps that's because of the whole simplifying the guitar and making it look more sleek. But the back side of these are just your typical stamped Gibson USA and there's no additional markings but they are the 490R, 498T. So your bridge pickup will ohm out about 13.38 and at the neck position, you're at a 7.48. The bridge is your typical lightning bolt style wraparound tailpiece. It's got those same markings as we found in the Vixen. You can see the TPBR and the other identification numbers in there. The knobs themselves for this run are kind of special. They're that UFO shape. Gibson later used something very similar to this on the high performance series guitars. And we'll take a quick look at the pickup cavities. There was probably some sort of marking in here at one point in time, but the black finish just kind of covered over it. But these do have a maple top. If you get it in the light just right, you can see it's a three piece top with a mahogany back a mahogany neck and an ebony fretboard. Now you can see with this one and some other ones, it almost looks like there's cracks in the fretboard. Now sometimes those are cracks, other times they're just really deep wood grain marks, but I do want you to be aware that they are present on this example. Do they affect the way the guitar plays? No, but you know, if that was on a guitar and I bought it and it wasn't as close, I'd probably be upset too. Truss rod works just fine on this one. It definitely has a lot of life left to it. As you can see the Les Paul model silk screen and the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. The nut width on these guys is 1.65 inches. and The body thickness is 1.86. And here's what the back control cavity looks like. You'll have two Gibson branded pots. 
However, this cap has definitely been replaced, and it appears the pickups might have been in and out of this guitar before, so a stock original cavity would not quite look like this. But here you can see the chambered body, how it just kind of has that center to it for the bridge and tailpiece, then everything else is just open there. Same thing going on with the toggle switch cavity. I always find it fun looking at the chambering. This example weighs 7 pounds, 7.3 ounces. Now that we've seen the insides of this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds.
Now that we know how this instrument sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This goddess, it's pretty worn. I bought this one simply for documentation purposes since this was the last color I needed. I think when I bought it, it was the second to last color, but <laughs> that's how it goes. Along the edges, the lacquer has kind of chipped where the veneer was applied. I mean, it's not separating or anything, but it is kind of a visual eyesore. So I do want you to be aware of that. But here's some close-ups for the wear to the edge of the headstock. That's just the finish kind of chipping away from the holly veneer. It's likely been dinged up a few times, and that's kind of why it looks a little bit bad on this example. But rest assured, the headstock's not just going to fall off on it or anything. And you've got some string change wear on the face of the headstock as well. But you do have your original locking Grover tuners. I'm not a fan of these. I don't really like the top locking system, but, but it's what came original on these. You have your original nut and ebony fretboard. The frets show very minor wear, so like just the start of fret wear, so nothing you'll have to worry about for a while. It was just conditioned and cleaned, but you can see the lacquer has definitely aged on this example. It's kind of yellow along the edges, and you have your typical binding crack lines where the frets have sprouted a little bit, but that's pretty well common on all Gibson guitars that have been played out anyways. Now being a black finish, it's gonna show lots of polishing marks and picking scratches and whatnot. I actually picked this one up from a different dealer and I think they polished it up pretty good. So it's looking pretty nice right now. It's like a nice black pearl right here. But obviously there are some deeper scratches kind of in the center of this guitar here. I'm hoping they're showing up. Back of the headstock, serial number looks like 02137310, made in USA. You've got kind of a small ding right here, and you have some various nicks, dings, and scratches up along the neck, mainly kind of right here. And that's something else about the Goddess series, is the top is a glossy finish, whereas the back is more satin. Now this one, it's been played a lot, so it definitely feels more glossy, and that might just be because somebody polished it up pretty good, because that's definitely evident on the top. But you can see lots of wear and tear on the back. I mean, the condition of this one, it's, it's not the greatest, but that also means the price will be lower for this one. You still have your original strap buttons on this one. And you can see some impression marks along the edges here. So it's been played. It's worn, but it could be in a lot worse shape. Let's go ahead and take a look under black light. Under black light, this thing glows a lot because it was somebody's gigging guitar. It has a very slight smoke odor to it. So that also kind of tells you why it's kind of yellowed. But everything's looking good here on the top. The edges are also looking good here. As is the back of the instrument. So right here, the finish has either been rubbed through, which it kind of feels like that, or a sticker was on it. It's not a touch up of any kind. Touch ups you can see because they won't glow at all. That area will be black, but you can see that area does glow a little bit, so it's it's different. I had somebody leaving some comments about that, so I wanted to clarify. And the back of the neck, it glows a lot more simply because somebody's sweaty hand has been on it. And it looks like maybe some stand rash right there. But thankfully, no breaks, cracks, or repairs to this headstock. So we're looking good here. This instrument comes in a Gibson USA case. It's not the original one, I really don't understand what happens to the original goddess cases. But out of the six or seven goddesses I've owned, like only one or two has had it. But this is your regular Les Paul style case. It has five latches in total, including the combo lock and the back latch. It's got some scrapes and scuffs, but overall it's in pretty okay shape. The interior is white, so it works really well with the black finish. You've got good heel support double neck rest and a compartment in there to hold your strap or whatnot. 
but overall this case is in good condition. Keep in mind that since this is a smaller body shape, it's not going to be a perfect fit, but if you just add a little bit of a foam strip down there, it'll be perfect. So I'll add some extra bubble wrap to tighten that fit up. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Les Paul Goddess in the ebony finish, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the reverb for sale ad. Thank you troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.